Unless, of course, like I said, someone can, because uh, otherwise it would be not fair to the people that are waiting. Um, so any comments yeah. from Ms. Ford? Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I understand there's a lot of people here, and for those items where we have people that have come in, I, I would like to see those taken care of first. Um, I, my understanding is the fire department is here for the tie um, situation. I don't think Mr. Tai is here at this moment, but I would like to be able to release the fire department to go back to what they need to get back to and have them make their talk. We could then table that and then wait for Mr. Tai to come back. Okay. Any other requests to take? I'm trying to find it on the agenda. Bill 214 is the fire yeah, department. Yeah, Bill 214. Let's read that into the record. We'll get the... Um, yeah, let's start there. Read it into the record, please, Mr. Clerk. Bill 214 amends section 25-8-33 City of Hilo Zone Map Article 8 Chapter 25 Zoning Code of the Hawaii County Code 1983-2005 edition by changing the district classification from multifamily residential 2,500 square feet RM 2.5 to multifamily residential 1,500 square feet RM 1.5 at Waikia South Hilo Hawaii covered by tax map key 2-4-028 colon 009 applicant Vincent T.C. Tai area 3.292 acres the Woodward Planning Commission forwards its favorable recommendation for a change of zone to allow the development of an 88 unit affordable housing project known as Hualalai Court on Hualalai Street in Hilo. Reference communication 718 introduced by Mr. Kern by request approved PC 61. Mr. Kern. Thank you Mr. Chair. Move to approve Bill 214. Second. Seconded by Ms. Ford. Okay, uh, Ms. Ford, did you want to uh, have the floor? If I might. Go ahead. First of all, um, Captain, please come forward. And while we're waiting, I've, I've colorized one of the schematics from Mr. Tai. Thank you for taking this out of order. I realize Mr. Tai is not here at this time, and I'm not trying to hold anything over. I need to get the fire department back to where they need to be. Um, so what I did, I was very concerned, as you know, about public safety. And um, Robert, could you grab that colorized schematic in front of you? Um, I was very concerned about this, and so I wrote to the chief. And um, they had a meeting over there, and Robert's going to um, make some comments about this subdivision. First of all, let me say, I'm not trying to stop this subdivision. I just want it to be safe. That's the only thing I'm concerned about. How do we make it safe? Um, and so, um, Robert, on this subdivision, um, I, uh, I have colorized the three areas that I'm really concerned about. Um, and also, I believe you have the have read the email from the chief for, that he sent back to me, and he said the minimum width of the fire department roads is 20 feet, with an exception to 15 feet. The Hawaii Fire Department would require them to widen the 12 foot section. I don't know what 12 foot section that is. The front entrance of the roadway is marked as 32 feet, and it, there's an assumed island gate. Uh, there's an island that's drawn in there, uh, with 12 foot paths on each side of the island. These two access lanes need to be a minimum of 20 feet by code, but there could be an exception to 15 feet. That was number one. Would you like to um, comment on that? Hit, hit your mic. Thank you, and please identify yourself. Morning, Council. I'm Fire Captain Robert Pereira with the Hawaii Fire Department. Uh, the 12-foot section we're talking about is that island section in the front. Yes, sir. Basically where it goes one way in, one way out. And in the dimensions that were submitted uh, in this schematic here, which is the same schematic, but it's, I guess, more defined in that schematic that you highlighted. It shows... Uh, Section two sections are in and out that would be 12 feet wide, and we need that to be a minimum of 15 feet. And, and 15 feet would be the exception. It should be 20, right? 
Yes, 15 feet would be the exception. There is an allot allowment for 15 feet because um, as far as driving, but when we need to park, uh, we need an area within 150 feet of uh, the structure that needs to be protected that's at least 20 feet wide for our, for our vehicles to park. Okay, the, th that brings us to the next um, section, which is the parking lot area. And I, I honestly don't know if that's 20 feet across there, but by code, it would have to be 20 feet. So I don't know if the fire trucks can um, use something less than 20 feet. Um, uh, Captain, our, please explain to them why you need 20 feet when you open the bays. What happens when our truck is parked, we need uh, ample space for um, the firefighters to open the doors and work around the vehicle, take out equipment, uh, to deploy hoses, to also, if it's a ladder truck, they're gonna deploy uh, supporting arms out. So we need to have um, the ample 20 feet wide. Uh, the parking area, the issue we have with that area is a turning radius. Obviously you see it curves and it turns back to a left turn and it further goes down an alley. Uh, that turning radius, we have to have a minimum of a 30 foot uh, inside turning radius or uh, a 60 foot outside turning radius. And in these plans, it doesn't um, depict that. Um, the other thing that we also need with this parking area is we need, because it's greater than 150 feet in length, we need an approved turnaround. Right now, our trucks would have to back all the way back out. Well, and in fact, if the fire engine or the ambulance got all the way down to the, uh, past the 90 degree turn and to the end, they would not only have to back out, they'd have to back out around a 90 degree turn, which would be... I don't know if they can do it. Not with the, the trucks. Okay. It's not that we can't do it. It's just it takes more time. Okay. Our response time will be affected. All right. Um, but that's that's why the code is there. It's for uh, response time and for safety. Okay. And hydrants? And there is no hydrants depicted on these plans. Okay. And we need hydrants every, um, according to Department of Water Supply standards, I believe it's every 600 feet for some place like this. Okay. Now, Mr. Tai sent a letter to the uh, council objecting to my statements on the public safety issue. And in the first paragraph, he talks about it's if it was, was a high rise that he would understand and accept my comments. Uh, Captain, would you, I gave you a copy of that. Are his statements in the first paragraph about the 12 story high rise? Um, what's the word I'm looking for? In alignment with our fire code. Well, his statement says, first of all, call de sac is not required since it is not a subdivision project. Um, I can answer that one. Our code currently says a uh, cul-de-sac cannot have more than 18 lots. And what the planning department and the developer are saying is that this is one lot, so therefore it's okay to have up to 105 dwellings and not meet the code. Okay, go yeah, ahead. I, I would not speak on that because I, I don't did. have that Thank knowledge. You. No, go ahead, Captain. Second part says, as for the safety issue, it might be easier to accept only one in out driveway if this project is a high rise structure say a 12 story building that contains 100 or more dwelling units for us it really doesn't matter as far as fire what we require is a minimum 15 foot wide access so if he took out that island we'd have a 32 foot access we'd be happy if he puts in the island all we need is a minimum 15 foot wide uh, access so uh, in that section now if there was a building next to this island then we would have to have a minimum 20 foot wide area right there so uh, as far as whether it is um, comparable to a high rise, it, for us it does not matter. Uh, we need to have the minimum 15 foot wide. Thank you. The other thing that he talks about in the second paragraph is the alley that you see in the, it's the middle orange stripe. It's a 15 foot wide alley that connects to the next property, which has apparently, per this letter, been passed by the council as a subdivision, but um, the, we have nothing from the owner of that property saying it's okay to use his property as an evacuation route, but it's only 15 feet wide. Yes, and it also has parking in front of it and a curb. 
Oh, how are we going to drive over the curb? Yeah, with the so fire that wouldn't be That's acceptable good. to us in this okay. proposed. Okay. And obviously, if it was to be used, it would have to be a minimum 15 feet wide, which it shows it is, but it would have to have a turning radius of 30 feet inside or max, uh, minimum or a 60 foot minimum outside turning radius. And then we'd have to look at that property and see where we're going to go from there. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to yield and let anyone else ask questions. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, council members, what the plan is, is we're going to um, get as much information uh, from the fire department, and then we're going to table this matter and then proceed with the rest of the agenda. So now's the opportunity to ask the fire department questions. Who was, I'm sorry, who was first? Mr. Onishi was? Well, I want to do my amendment. Oh, okay. We're not, okay. Yeah, yeah. We're not so, yeah, yeah. So, this thing. Mr. Kern. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so, Captain, on uh, any development of this nature, they have to comply with the fire code, correct? Correct. Whether it be commercial or, or residential, it has to comply with fire code, subdivision, multifamily. Correct. Right. And it states here in um, Condition R that they have to comply with all county, state, and federal laws. So, I just don't understand all of this talking about the schematic there's no way that this could ever get approved we're, we're, we're approving a, a zoning a density um, if this doesn't fly he can make the schematic it's going to go to you guys you guys are going to come back and, and issue tell the planning department or tell them this doesn't comply here's what you do need to do to get it to comply correct unless they get it to comply they'll never get a certificate of occupancy correct so I just my, my point is that they have to comply with this I don't care if it says 15 feet or 20 feet if it's wrong on this they have to change it to comply at the end of the day if they don't comply it's not gonna work so nitpicking this schematic on 15 feet 20 feet 30 feet really doesn't matter it's really a matter of density are we gonna does this density work or does this density not work because if the density works he just has to make it work to comply with the fire department to, to make it comply without that 15 foot wide alley here that's highlighted mm -hmm. um, you'd have to have a turnaround um, created probably at the end before this left turn you may lose some of these townhouses here correct and yeah. those are just the challenges that, that him as a developer will have to face um, working out the working out the kink so that that's just my point is he has to comply with the fire department yes and this schematic may or may not work it's really a matter of are we okay with that density so um, thank you very much for being here you're welcome and, Okay, thank you, Mr. Kern. Uh, Ms. Eoff? Yeah, my question was basically the same. I, I, I see that there's ex at least three things that need to be corrected. Two of them are pretty easy, adding fire hydrants and widening the entrance. Um, the other one, the third one, is going to be a challenge to find the, the way in and out or the turnaround. But um, would you, um, how do we know that if we approve a density um, I guess he would just have to comply before the final plan he can, is approved by the fire department. He can develop his his property, but prior to any development, he's going to have to have plans reviewed. And during that plan review process, we would reject this plan at this time. Yeah, at that so plan review time. When he comes back later this afternoon, um, that would be something to discuss with him. How he and if correct. If I think I think the. The part that we want to be careful on is that um, sometimes people feel that when they get approval from the council, that gives approval for them to do what they want to do. Plan. So we need to make sure yeah. that, that we're and all on the same page. And then it may be pushed down to the fire department or other agencies as, hey, I got approval right. to do it like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think as, as a council, you may be um, careful in what you guys approve because some people may say, hey, look, I got this approved. Mm -hmm. And on this date, why are you guys forcing me to do these things? It would just, yeah. it would, I think we need to just make those things clear of what we've learned yeah. with him. Yeah. But um, I thank you very much, and I understand. You're welcome. Okay, thank you, Ms. Seoff. Uh, Ms. Any other, el anyone else? Other Ms. Ford? Not to put in hydrants, not to correct any of these things. I believe you have, the fire department has the option of requiring the developer to put sprinklers in all of the buildings. It, would that take away any of the other things that need to be done, or it would just be another option 
Sprinklers would be an option that we could lessen some of the requirements, but with sprinklers, you still need hydrants to feed those sprinklers. You still would need an access road so our trucks can come in and support the sprinkler system. All it does, it, it, it may uh, increase the distance that we can allow for access. Okay. Um, instead of being within 150 feet, we may allow it to 300 feet. Okay. Um, but it would still require access. All right. Captain, thank you so much for breaking away from what you were doing to come in and give us this information. I appreciate it. No problem. And you. if you guys do need me, um, if you guys have a time that Mr. Tai is available, I can possibly make it back. Okay. okay. We'll, we'll let thank you. you. Know. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Okay, motion to table, Ms. Ford. And so moved. Second. <laughs> Second. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. Okay, any discussion on the motion to table? Otherwise... Um, uh, council members, do we want to do a, a voice vote for today's meeting? Yes, okay, so um, Mr. Chair, move to suspend our rules to uh, allow us to do voice votes. Okay, any discussion on that? If not, uh, oh, we got to do roll call vote for that. Mr. Clerk, <laughs> on the motion to suspend so we can do a voice vote. Ms. Zioff? Aye. Ms. Ford? Aye. Mr. Ligon? Aye. Mr. Kanuha? Aye. Mr. Kerr? Aye. Mr. Nishi? Aye. Ms. Poindexter? Aye. Ms. Willie? Aye. Chair Shimono? Aye. Chair Shimono of nine ayes on the, t on the motion. Okay, thank you. Motion passes. Okay, all those in favor of uh, tabling uh, Bill 214, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, you said aye, Mr. Onish. Okay. <laughs> if I could reflect unanimous vote. Okay. Um, Council members, look at the, uh, the agenda. Uh, if there's no objection, I think we can take... Um, Miss Willie's resolution, unless there's someone here for either resolution 308, 316, 318, 329, or 330. Is there anyone here for resolutions 308, 316, 318, 329, or 330? You're here for 329. Okay. Well, um, why don't we take that and then we'll, Miss Willie will take yours right after that. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Clerk, resolution 329 14. Resolution 329-14 authorizes the Department of Research and Development to award funds to the White County Economic Opportunity Council, HCEOC, pursuant to Chapter 2, Article 25, Section 2-139A-3A, Hawaii County Code, the Department of Research and Development is providing a grant of $113,000 to HCEOC to supplement the creation of a transmedia accelerator program. The program encourages diversification, creates employment opportunities, and supports innovation in the field of media production. Reference communication 724, introduced by Ms. Poindexter, approved FC 139. Uh, Ms. Poindexter? A uh, motion to approve resolution 329-14. Second. Seconded by Ms. Yoff. Any discussion? Hearing or seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Resolution 329-14 is unanimously approved. Thank you. Miss, Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Chair. You know, um, there's some people from Kau here, and um, so I would think that if we can just do no, Ms. Ford's one. She's, she's next. Yeah. I'm next. Go ahead, go ahead, Mr. Anishi, you have the floor. I'm yeah, not no, you. So since, you know, this should be fast, um, resolution 354-14. Um, and they, they can leave. I mean, with this weather too, you know, it's like, I would say we can. Yeah, we are, I, I traveled I all the way from Kau to here. You were out of the room when we discussed it, yeah. but we had to talk about taking Miss Willie's one uh, next because it was number six on the agenda, right? So you have to talk to Miss Willie to see oh. if she has it any objections. Like, only like one minute. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you. So Miss Willie's being accommodating. Thank okay. you. Right. So that is 354. Resolution 354, Mr. Clerk. Resolution 354-14 transfers appropriates an appropriation out and from the designated fund account and creates same to a designated fund account to provide a grant for Okau Kako for the Nalehu 4th of July activities. Transfers appropriates $10,000 out and from Clerk Council Services Contingency Relief Council District 6. Credit same to the Department of Parks and Recreation, Parks, Culture, Arts, other 
current expenses, miscellaneous contract services, Nalehu, 4th of July activities, reference communication 771, introduced by Ms. Ford, waived FC. Ms. Ford. Move to approve resolution 354-14. Second. Seconded by Mr. Ilega. Ms. Ford. Thank you. Um, move to amend resolution 354-14. Dash 14 with the contents of communication 771.1. Second. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I've had further discussions with Ooka'u <coughs> Kako, and they have revised the appropriation required to do this uh, particular project down to $4,500, and so we are adjusting this down, and I ask for your support. Okay. Any other discussion on the amendment to uh, change it to $4,500? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, I believe that is a substantial amendment, so unless there's a motion to, uh, go ahead, Ms. Foy. Um, move to suspend the rules um, and get this approval finalized today. Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Kunuha. Any discussion on the motion to suspend for the purposes indicated? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Mr. Chair. Okay, so we're on the main motion, Ms. Ford. Go ahead. We're on the main motion. Oh, so we can vote on it, and then I'll do the suspension again. I don't want to hold this. Oh, you don't want to hold it either. I don't, okay. don't want to hold okay. it. I'll wait for the final vote, though. Go ahead. So we're on the main motion, as okay. amended. Any? No. Okay. All those, any discussion? All those in favor of uh, resolution 354-14 as amended, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Go ahead, Ms. Ford. Uh, move to suspend the rules on the five-day hold so we can process this immediately. Second. Seconded by Mr. Illigan. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. That's taken care of. Okay. Ms. Thank, thank you. Ms. Mr. Illigan. Thank you very Mr. much. Um, uh, Renee is here, and I was wondering it's going to be if I could ask council member Willie to just take the two resolutions and it'll be rather quick just like what just happened it, she can get on to what she needs to do if that's okay Miss Willie, Mr. Elegant is asking to take his two resolutions because there's Ms. Syracuse here waiting for um, those two resolutions, saying that it'll be quick. Uh, but I defer to you because you're actually ahead on the agenda. Yeah, I can do it. Okay, I don't see any controversy in Zip Sam Okay, okay. All right, so Mr. Elegant, why don't you uh, refresh our memory? Which uh, two are you asking? Um, three, 338 and 340? Yep. Mr. 338 and 340. Um, Okay. Uh, excuse me. I would li uh, before we go into that, I would like to just make a motion to suspend the five-day hold on all of our contingency uh, that uh, get approved today. And the reason is we're close to the end of the budget cycle. I, uh, that <laughs> sorry to interrupt, but no, let's get yours going you're too. Fine. Is that the? Uh, My motion is to sus to suspend the rules on the five-day hold on all contingency funds that are approved today. Okay. So long as everyone understands that motion. Okay. Any discussion on that motion? No. Second, it was by Mr. Illigan. Okay. All right. All those in. No, Mr. Kern. Mr. Kern, sorry. <laughs> it's too many people talking. Okay. Sorry. No, we got to recognize the whoever's talking. So, yeah. anyway, um, so, Mr. Kern seconded that motion. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion passes okay. unanimously. So, that's for all of the contingency resolutions on our agenda today. Okay. That are approved today. That are approved. Oh, are we going to vote? No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all righty. So, Mr. Clerk, let's take resolution 338-14 followed by 340. Resolution 338-14 transfers appropriates an appropriation out and from designated fund account and credit same to a designated fund account to provide a grant to the Malama Opuna for Pahoa High School's project grad night. Transfers appropriates $2,000 out and from Clerk Council Services Contingency Relief Council District 4. Credit same to the Department of Liquor Control, Public Programs, Miscellaneous Contract Services, Project Grad Night, Pahoa High School. Reference Communication 741. Introduced by Mr. Illigan. Waived FC. Mr. Illigan. I move to approve Resolution 338-14. Second. Seconded by Mr. Kurt. Any discussion, Mr. Illigan? No, well, it speaks for itself. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And there's no uh, five-day holdover. Okay, Mr. Clerk, next item 340-14. 
Resolution 340-14 transfers appropriates an appropriation out and from the designated fund account and credit same to a designated fund account to provide a grant to Malama Opuna for the Keao Ohana Forest Reserve Restoration Project. Transfers appropriates $3,850 out and from Clerk Council Services Contingency Relief Council District 4. Credit same to the Department of Research and Development, Agriculture, Research and Development, other current expenses, miscellaneous contract services, Keao Ohana Forest Reserve Restoration Project. Reference Communication 743 introduced by Mr. Ilegan Waved FC. Mr. Ilegan. I move to approve Resolution 340-14. Second. Seconded by Mr. Current. Any discussion? I just wanted to say this is a little bit unique in the sense of this is working with R&D in Forest Restoration Project in District 5 and this will just be funding um, the supplies needed for that restoration. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Mr. Chair, can I ask Ms. <laughs> Willie one more favor? <laughs> you might be stretching it there, Mr. Nishi, but go ahead, good luck. Okay. There's resolution 352-14, that's for the Hawaii Island Veterans Day Parade. I know there are a couple of people in the audience. That Mr. Kama's right there. Yeah. yeah. And Mr. Kama's right outside, so. How fast can you do it? Um, Brenda should be fast, right? It's really fast. Yeah, it's really fast. Okay. I just want okay. to get your comment in here. Yeah. We vote yes. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, it's that's really it, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, resolution 352-14, Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Ms. Willie. Resolution 352-14 transfers appropriates an appropriation out and from the designated fund account and credit same to a designated fund account to provide a grant to Hawaii Island Veterans Memorial Incorporated for the Hawaii Island Veterans Day Parade. Transfers appropriate $6,400 out and from Clerk Council Services <laughs> Contingency Relief Council District 6 credit same to the Department of Parks and Recreation, Culture, Arts, Other Current Expenses, Miscellaneous contract services Hawaii Island Veterans Day Parade reference communication 764 introduced by Ms. Ford waived FC Ms. Ford move to approve resolution 352-14 Second. seconded by Mr. Ilagan uh, go ahead Ms. Ford thank you Mr. Kama and Wendell would you introduce yourselves into the microphone and you can say a few words we'll do this really quick <coughs> I want to thank all of you. Uh, Please say your name first. Say your name, sir. No, no, push the button. My okay. name is Dan Kama. Thank you. And um, I'm the chairman for the Veterans Day Parade for this island of Hawaii. Um, normally, I'd like to do the talk, but in this situation, uh, one down here is my uh, co chair in this parade, and he's my communication officer also. So I'll have one to do the talk. Thank okay. you. <laughs> I can't single dance, but I, I want to say, uh, Wendell, Dan Wendell, and I going. Please give your full name. Oh, uh, name's uh, Wendell Kaehu I am. And uh, Dan and I have been, uh, we're on the sixth year right now. And um, I'm fortunate enough to have Brenda as uh, one of our alumni in the parade. And we'd like to invite all of you folks in the parade this year, uh, November the 8th. And we're also going to have a fundraiser at the old C. Brewer office in August. And we also have a golf tournament because we need to generate income for the uh, parade. Runs about $10,000 for us. But this is the sixth year since uh, Dan and I have been running this parade and we got a lot of support. And this year's theme for the parade is we're going to honor uh, military, uh, female in military and female retired. And I want to introduce my example is my sister back there with a hat on. She's with the uh, Airborne uh, 101st Screaming Eagles. So she helped uh, get Hussein out of his palace down there. <laughs> so, you know, so women is going to be our focus for this year's parade November the 8th. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for coming in. Okay, any other discussion? If not, thank you, gentlemen. Okay, okay uh, all those in favor of resolution 352-14 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, let's take resolution 332- There's also some other he people here that were present. Mr. Tai, you indicated to me you have a flight to catch at 2.30? 2.40? Okay. Um, I see Mr. Fouquet here also, too. Um, we'll go right to his right now. 
Okay. okay. Any objections to taking uh, Mr. Yeah. Tai? No objections to taking the uh, Bill 214? No. Okay. Okay, so uh, I would need a motion to remove Bill 214 from the table. So moved. Second. Okay. Thank you. Uh, motion made by Mr. Kern and then seconded by Mr. Ilagan. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. So the record will reflect um, eight ayes and Mr. Uh, Kanuha is excused. Okay, so Bill 214 is live on the floor. Who would like to go first? Mr. Onishi. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, at this time, I would like to amend Bill 214 with the contents and communication number 718.4. Second. Seconded by Mr. Ilagan. Go ahead, Mr. Onishi. And this is just... Um, at the last meeting, we had uh, testifiers from the community saying that they had an agreement with the applicant, and so now we're putting it into the bill, and so it states all the the different ones about the setbacks, about the um, on-site manager. It talks about the chingling fencing, and also it mentioned oh, and, and the rock wall, and then also agreeing about. Uh, not exceeding two stories high. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Yes. Miss Ford. Thank you. Um, on the amendment. No. Not on the amendment. Okay. So we have the amendment before us. Um, any further comments on the amendment, Mr. Onishi? Oh, that's no. It. No other discussion. It's really okay. Cut. Clean cut. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Record will reflect eight ayes and Mr. Uh, Kanuha excused. Okay. We're back uh, to the main motion as amended. Bill 214 has been amended. Discussion. Ms. Ford. Thank you. Um. <coughs> I wanted to um, let the community and Mr. Tai know that we had the fire department in here earlier today um, explaining why, what objections they had to the current design of this application. And um, there is a the 15 foot exit to the next property which may or may not be allowed by that property owner. We have nothing in writing that says it'll happen. Um, is a problem. It should be 20 feet wide. We have a 90 degree turn that appears not to be uh, meeting the fire code. There's no turnaround um, on this particular development for the fire department equipment to make a turnaround. Um, let's see what else do we have. The entrance appears to have an island in it that may block egress, ingress or egress to the development. Uh, that means the lanes won't be wide enough for the fire trucks to get through safely. <clears throat> now the problem that I see in this situation, and I, I have to say that I'm quite offended at something Mr. Kern said earlier that I was nitpicking. It's my job, my number one priority, to protect public health, safety, and welfare. That is the primary job of government. So it's not nitpicky, it's my job. I would hope it's everybody's job. The problem that I see in this um, issue is that we can wait to assume that the planning director is going to do something to rectify these problems. I personally don't believe that these things should come to us in this kind of condition. Um, the other thing that um, I don't know, I don't know if Mr. Thiel, who is our traffic engineer, would come to the table. I just have a question, and you may be released very quickly by me. Um, there was a TIAR, that's the traffic analysis, that was done, and the traffic, uh, traffic analysis was done originally for 88 units. Um, and Mr. Witcher, who did this, claims that everything's fine. I don't know that for a fact on my own. I'm not a traffic engineer. But the concern I has, have is that 
This property is zoned for 59 units. That passed a previous council. Now this application has gone to 88, and we have to make a determination. But Mr. Tai was talking about 105 units. So he's gone through this whole process of 88 units. He's based his traffic analysis on 88 units, but he's talking about doing 105 units. I have a problem with this. Uh, because that means if, if he really is going to do 105 or anything over 88, the traffic analysis is not accurate for the, the correct number of units that he's planning on building. So for me, that is a problem. Let me say one more time, I am not opposed to this development. I'm opposed to the safety issues that are designed into this development, and I think they need to be rectified before we go any further. Um, so those are the things that I have um, been concerned about. I've raised them. Um, I don't consider them to be nitpicky. I consider them to be public safety issues. Uh, Mr. Thiel, have, would you come forward? Have you read the, T the traffic analysis that was done? Okay, uh, Mr. Thiel is our traffic engineer. <laughs> Please introduce yourself, sir. I'm Ron Thiel, Chief of the Traffic Division for the okay. County of Hawaii. Okay, hold on a second, Mr. Thiel. Can we get the sound up on the mics on the testifier's table? Okay, we heard you. Please continue. Have you read this th traffic analysis? Yes, I did. What do you think about the traffic analysis for 88 lots, much, much less 105? Especially emptying onto Hualalai Street. This TIAR is showing that 88 units hits right at the 50 uh, triggering point for a TIAR. Uh, anywhere between 51 and 49, but it's right at that threshold. Um, I agree with the conclusions of the report that says that it's really, it doesn't really do a traffic uh, impact to the area based on this. Uh, I was looking at the volumes. Um, if you move it from 88 to 105, I still think you're going to be fine. Uh, and the reason why I say that is before I came to this community, we always use 100 as a th threshold for the peak hour. Okay. And, and it's always worked out quite well. And so what I see the difference between 50 and 100, I'm still not really concerned. Okay. Uh, thank you. I'm satisfied on the situation of the traffic analysis. So um, it's the fire code that I'm concerned about, and I think we need to correct that. So I'm going to yield at this time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Ford. Mr. Kern. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, okay. We're dealing with a... Uh, a rezone here and to be honest or actually let me just do this um, can I get the plan director to come up Mr. Kanuha it's my belief that everybody here on the council is uh, very concerned about public safety and that is a number one for us um, I also believe that there are laws in place such as the conditions that are in here and, and the laws that we have with our planning uh, fire code um, Department of Public Works engineering etc that are there to protect public safety and that currently exists so we as a council don't have to put a condition in there every single time we can say comply with the county state and federal laws which would mean they'd have to comply with the planning department with the fire department etc um, so my question to you uh, mr. Kanoha, would you please identify yourself yes uh, good afternoon council members my name is Dwayne Kanoha I'm the planning director thank you um, so what we have here is that same okay. plan right here um, if this gets approved with this density this plan could completely change, correct? Correct. This plan doesn't really mean anything, does it? That's correct. Correct. And that plan that would come in, whether it be a modified version of this plan, if this plan came in with what it is and the information that we know that with the fire department, fire code, this plan would probably be rejected and there'd have to be some amendments made to it if there's issues with it. There may be other 
components that we would be involved with that this plan may not meet as well. Correct. And so, like, so this plan can change in so many different ways. This plan, to me, doesn't really mean anything. What we're looking at is a density. Can this place handle up to uh, potentially up to 105 units? Are the conditions in here proper for that? And if there's any specific conditions that we need to address that, that's what should be in here. Otherwise, it's covered by the laws that we currently have through the planning department, through the fire department, et cetera. Right. And that's, that's the checks and balances. So if there's anything specific that comes up, such as um, the on-site manager, such as the setback condition, mm -hmm. et cetera, those things need to be put in here because those are outside of the normal scope of those laws that we have. Now, if we were going to be giving <clears throat> an exemption to the fire code. That's another story. Then we need to, okay, yeah, exempt, we, like, we would have to really look at that and have a condition here if we're exempting it. We're not exempting anything. There's nothing being asked to be exempted about this project. Therefore, the existing fire code and every other law that applies to developing um, a property of this nature would need to be complied with to get a certificate of occupancy. If they're not complied with, you won't get a certificate of occupancy. Is that right, Mr. Director? Correct. Which would mean that property would be pretty much worthless if it doesn't have a, C, a certificate of occupancy. I, mm -hmm. my, so my, to, to some extent, that, um, so my point is, is that there are laws in here. If we're exempting something, we should have that written in here. If there's anything specific that we need to do, it should be in here. And furthermore, I think um, calling this a, uh, a subdivision is not necessarily on point. Um, would you consider the Lagoon Center a subdivision? No. No. Would you consider an apartment complex a subdivision? No. no. This would not be considered a subdivision. Correct. With the zoning, he could potentially make a subdivision in the future, correct? Correct. And he would have to comply with those those laws, right? Yes. Such as a, a cul-de-sac if it meets so many lots, etc. Right. So I just don't see how this could ever be called a subdivision. This is a multifamily complex, just like the Lagoon Center and, and many other places, and we have the laws that are in here to protect us. So this plan, I don't, that's why I'm saying, like, looking at this plan and going over every little detail in this plan, to me, that's not our job. Our job is to look at, are they complying with the laws? Is there any specific conditions that we need in here? And does this density meet the, the area? Is it com conducive with the general plan, etc.? And it does. We covered the issues. This should be a, this subject should be, pow. Um, with that, I uh, yield. Thank you, Mr. Director, for coming up. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Kern. Um, anyone else? Ms. Mm, Ford. Thank you. Mr. Kanuha. Yes. <coughs> um, could you explain to me why on a cul-de-sac we only allow 18 lots? No. I mean, that's that's what the code says. That's what the code's been ever since I've been there, yeah. So we have a code with no reason behind it that we're aware of, other than it's just in the code. Correct. Okay. And if we have a project that, for all intents and purposes, is a cul-de-sac, it's called a driveway in this case, mm -hmm. we can put 105 units, dwelling units, on it, and that's legal. Well, let me say that uh, the term cul-de-sac, data and street, you know, those are found in the subdivision codes, mm -hmm. you know, and they are related to partitioning of land, okay. Uh, in this particular case, it's a zoning, um, zoning application. The end result, I guess you could say, is is uh, some kind of an ownership transfer, either by rental or CPR or something like that. But it doesn't involve the you know partitioning of this particular parcel. Yeah. Okay. When I view something like this, I have difficulty. I understand the law, the codes. Mm -hmm. I do but I have difficulty understanding the logic of a driveway with 105 units on it versus a cul-de-sac with only 18 lots, assuming one unit per lot. Mm -hmm. It seems to me to be a problem, but that's my opinion, and I think mm -hmm. the code should be changed, but that's another issue for another day. Mm -hmm. So when I look at this, 
and I see the issues, are you allowed as the planning director to require the next door property to allow Mr. Ty's tenants or owner or condo owners or whatever they're going to be to exit onto his property? See the this orange thing up here? Yes, yes. In this rezoning, do you have any right to order the next property to allow his tenants to exit through their property? I don't believe so. I don't believe so either. Do you have anything in writing from the tenant from the property owner next door that says that he will allow Mr. Ty's tenants, owners, or whatever to exit onto his property through his private driveway? Uh, not that I can recall. Okay, I don't think you have one either. So, do you have the authority as a planning director to make exemptions to the fire code? No. Okay. Do you have um, any personal opinion on a developer who would submit a diagram that violates the, the code, the fire codes? Do you have a personal, should, should they be submitting something that's real to us that meets our codes or should they be just making up stuff and giving it to us? Well, I know that uh, Mr. Tai is aware of what the fire code requirements are. Okay. I mean, he has he has what their commentary is, um, as well as we do. Okay, but he hasn't changed the schematic at all. As far as I'm, yeah, okay. as far as I know, he has. Did you take out the rule of thumb twenty percent for roads? Because this is not a road. They're the, semantically, we're calling this a driveway. Did does uh, this still require twenty percent of the acreage to to be in there? That's a good question. I don't, I don't recall that I've had. No. Okay. All right. You've seen this picture before. This is part of the submission, this ponding, giant ponding area. This is the oh, submission. No, I haven't seen that. No. Okay. Hold on a second. This is one of the pictures that was submitted, I believe, by a neighbor. I'm not sure about that, however. Oh, yes, I've seen it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> one of the neighbors testified, and it's recorded in the Planning Commission, that when we have heavy rains in Hilo, that this property ponds the way this picture shows. Now, Mr. Ty has indicated throughout the document that he's going to mitigate for this. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the standard mitigation is? How many year rainfall? Are you familiar with that? We leave that up to the Department of Public Works yes. Engineering. The standard is a 10-year rainfall. So anything higher than a 10-year rainfall, that's the requirement to mitigate to. Mm -hmm. This is what happens with anything higher than a 10-year rainfall. That means this property is on low ground. Okay. Mm -hmm. This means this is going to happen. It doesn't matter if the property, if the water's coming from the sky or for the next door neighbor's property, it is going to pond because it's on low ground. Since it's on low ground, and you, and if Mr. Ty were to build 10-year rainfall standard dry wells, it's still going to pond. Sure, There's no way not to get it to pond here because it's low ground. Um, how, I, I realize this is public works and they're not here, but I don't understand how you're going to address this with this uh, current rezoning because it looks to me like there'll be a 105 units that are going to be underwater. Mm -hmm. how, do, how do we as a county deal with something like that? Well, again, all I can say is uh, the Department of Public Works have provided their commentary to this, and when he comes in with his uh, final plan approval, then he'll have to meet with whatever standards they require him to do. Which is a 10-year standard. Would be, yes. Okay. So I think we can agree that a 10-year standard isn't going to work, and I think I heard my timer go off, so I'm going to yield at this time. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ford. Any other, uh, Ms. Willie? Um, yeah, can the... Uh, can a fire truck turn around in this parking lot without having to back up? In the parking lot? Yeah, a, a comes in in the parking lot. Is there a way, like a um, T 
guarantee or where? I don't think it's it, it's allowable unless we're going to create a condition <laughs> that the plan that is um, submitted has to be the exact plan. So I don't I don't I, just, I don't like, care whether it says it, it, that it's it not will possible be. to do. You uh, can't you can't do that. Finish okay. Okay, my two okay. cents, okay, and then I'll listen to your. You're two asking cents. him to do something. It's different than an opinion. Okay. Ms. Can Ms. I continue? Willie, Willie, just uh, finish just up. Finish I'm just thought. finishing up. Go ahead. I'm just telling you what is my concern, whether we say that this is Shelby and who's checking the box, that's my concern. Okay, I understand. Thank you. I understand. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Willie. Ms. Yeah. Poindexter. Okay, so I agree okay. with you. This is mm -hmm. a rezoning application. Mm -hmm. So you understand that if this should pass council, that this may totally change, correct? That's well, your some, I wouldn't say totally. To yeah, concept, but there yeah. will be mm -hmm. some changes according from what we heard already from the fire department. Exactly. So you're aware that this is not what we're approving, correct? Correct. Okay. Are, you're only approving the uh, rezoning, the rezoning okay. only. Yes. Thank you very much. And can I have Mr. Uh, Kanuha up here again and I'll just uh, confirm that also. <laughs> This is not what the council is approving today, right? The plans on the property. No, you're just approving the zoning. Rezoning. Yeah. So this has uh, really what they provided to you to start the rezoning process. After the rezoning, it goes through the fire department. Like the fire department was here earlier and acknowledged that they will go through it and say whether or not they could pass and what changes have, has to be made. Correct. So I think this morning when we had that um, discussion, hmm. we we're just wanting to make sure that the owner knew that if this would pass the council because it's rezoning, that doesn't mean that we're passing this. So, uh, passing this plan. That's correct. Okay. So, thank you very much, and you're aware of that. So, that that takes care of what our discussion was this morning. So, thank you I very much. I totally understand, but I do want to address about the um, the flooding. The the uh, public work department uh, individual did come to testify during the planning commission hearing. Uh, the water actually is coming from a stream under Popolo Street. In fact, my neighbors right adjacent to my property here, as I was told, and needs to be confirmed with the public work department, they have something called like a, a flooding flood easement. Because they are supposed to construct that easement so that the water doesn't go into my property or the neighbor's property. So the, all the water is coming from a stream outside of my property, outside uh, uh, on, 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 the, it would be on the west side of the property. And as I was told, all this property along the property line, they're supposed to have that easement. They're supposed to control the water so that the water doesn't come into the Jason property, which is my property. So I told um, uh, the one, the, um, uh, Mr. Wright, right, uh, that we need to go to talk to the public work department more because the roof, the so-called the dry stream, which become very wet, is completely outside of my property. And they shouldn't, the water even shouldn't come to my property at all. So we try to resolve that, try to work with the neighbors. Um, so that's, to the best of my understanding, uh, is my neighbors did not do the job that prevent the water from flowing because they're supposed to have an easement to take care of that. And as, as far as the, um, uh, the car coming in and out, I, I remember you uh, you objected to it. The, like, the director mentioned that this is not a um, uh, subdivision because I tried to point out maybe in my letter it didn't quite make sense to you. Uh, imagine this is a 10-story building okay, with 100 units. Uh, almost most of the condos, they only have one way in and out. So you have to exit all the cars. We're talking about 400, 500 cars, you know, in, in any condos in, in Honolulu. This is actually similar in a sense, except that this is not vertical 100 units. But you can imagine you have 100 cars, car park, okay? These cars still have to come out. They only have one driveway or one ramp in and out. So it's not unusual, you know. I know 100 units seems like a lot, but 
in reality, we're looking at the context of the city, and, 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 and this is my experience, I've been in Aki for 40 years, okay? 100 units is not a lot of units. Granted, in Hilo, they haven't built anything the last 40 years, so 100 units seems to be a lot, but actually it really isn't in terms of car com coming in and out. You know, that's why the TI, uh, the, uh, the traffic report reported that the impact is very little, uh, which is not surprising. Um, we, if we're talking about 600, 1,000 cars, it's different. You know, 100 is really very minimal. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Poindexter, you have the floor. Oh, no, I'll yield. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Kern. Oh, oh Ms. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to um, reiterate what Ms. Poindexter said, because that was my concern this morning as well, that the um, fire department had let us know about several problems with the configuration here of the, um, the roadway widths and uh, no turnaround and no fire hydrants. So I just wanted to make sure that you were um, aware that there would be... I am aware. I am aware, yeah. Okay, and also just uh, I wanted to let everybody know that um, actually this property was already zoned for um, 2,500 square foot multiple family. Correct. So this is just going from there to 1,500 Correct. square foot. Yeah, well, I think I explained last time, um, this project and I intend to build affordable housing, we call work for housing, between 60% to 100%. Because of that, they're smaller units. Right. The 94% are one bedroom units. The previous scheme, the 2,500 square feet, 90% are two bedroom units. So when you add up all the number of bedrooms in the floor area, actually this is a smaller project. Oh really? I'm, okay. I'm forced to do smaller, floor plates because these are workforce housing. You cannot build mm. you know, large units. And believe me or not, from reading from all the newspaper documents, this is a income gap that the housing is needed for all of this, the, all the in, in Honolulu and in, 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 in other uh, county as well. And that's the way I understand it. And nobody's building it. As far as I know, Hilo has never even built even one project based on between 60 to 100 percent AMI. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Ford. Director Kanuha, would you come forward, please? Could you re-identify yourself, sir? Was that? <laughs> I'm sorry. Could you re-identify yourself? Oh, okay. okay. Dwayne Kanoha, planning okay. director. Thank you, sir. Um, director, what was submitted to the planning commission was 88 units. Correct. And you approved that, right? Uh, well, we recommended approval. I'm sorry, what? We recommended approval of okay. it, yeah. So, uh, Mr. Tai has been talking about, to us, mm -hmm. 105 units. So how many units are you going to actually allow? We can allow whatever the density would allow him to put on. So what does this density allow? How many, what's the I think it's, I think it's between 104 to 105. Okay. That's the max. Is that based on, Mr. Kanua, is it based on the fact that there's a driveway that should, maybe should be reduced from the acreage? Oh, okay. Is this, has this 105 units is that on gross acreage, acreage or it's on gross acreage again yes. yeah. are you going to allow 105 units I have to see what his plan is you know because his plan is 105 units well, his plan is 105 units okay but if he has to make accommodations for what fire wants if he wants, if he needs to make accommodations for whatever public works wants in, in relation to drainage and all these other things, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be a, a net of 105. Mr. Tai, do you understand that 105 is based on the gross acreage that you have here and that after you meet the fire codes and any other codes that are required for you to meet that you will not get 105 units out of this project? Certainly. I, I, I said 104, 105 just because that's what the zoning would mean. Okay, there, we seem to have a misunderstanding here. Your zoning is divided into the gross acreage Okay, the one, the 1,500 is divided into gross acreage. What I'm talking to D Director mm -hmm. Kanuha about 
is that after you meet all the fire codes and the parking codes and whatever else codes that right. there are, you will not get 105 lot or units out of this. Do you understand that? It depends on my plan. If they're all small That's units, true. could yeah. be one of, could, let's say they, they are That's true. more one bedroom or more studio units. Okay. I think it's all based on the number of bedrooms, number of the total floor area footprints. So I cannot tell you right now. Yeah. All I know is whatever the zoning allows, that's what allowed. Okay. Um, we heard this earlier this morning. I just want you to be aware of this. I want it all on the record <clears throat> from the fire department. One of the questions I asked was about the distance from the entrance to this property to the back end of the, the units, mm -hmm. which is greater than 150 feet. Therefore, you have to put in hydrants along here. Do you understand that? If it does require, then it will be done. That's fine. And that if the distance is too great, that you may also be required to put in fire sprinklers in these units. Do you understand that? If that is required, then it will be done. Okay. I want to thank you for answering the question I wanted on the record. I am... Probably, uh, this council may not realize it, but I have been trying for a year or more to get housing, affordable housing, in the price range that you're, you're dealing with here, the 60 to 100 percent. And I've attempted to even change the code on that issue. And I commend you for targeting that price range because we don't have housing any place. You know why there's none? Because it's expensive. Because it's very difficult to de develop that kind of project. <coughs> I'm determined to do it. And in fact, I need everybody's I, cooperation I, in order to do it. I understand, Mr. Tai. I'm, I'm <laughs> commending you for targeting in that price range. Yeah. The concern that I have that I want to raise to the council, and this doesn't have anything to do with you, sir, or your development, is that there are, I've been told by the housing agency, there's at least 300 credits floating around, I don't know where, floating around this island that can be purchased for pennies on the dollar that would allow a developer not to build affordable housing if they could get the right number of credits for their area. Um, my understanding of these, these types of housing that Mr. Tai is working diligently to produce is that he will get tax credits from the federal government, he might get grants, he might get other types of compensation um, to help him build this desperately needed housing. I don't have any problem with any of that, um, but I would hate to pass this uh, on the basis that it's affordable before we really know that it's going to be affordable in that price range. And I don't know what to do about that. Mm. Mr. Kanuha, excuse me, Director Kanuha, <laughs> I don't want to get I don't want to get Drew going in here. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do to make sure that this is going to be truly in the 60 to 100% price range? Is there anything that we can do? You know, again, all we have is Chapter 11. Yeah, whatever <laughs> well, Chapter 11 has. You and I both know that that's not working so good. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to yield. Okay. Um, we're on our second round, so this is the last round. Um, Ms. Mr. Kern, you wanted to finish up? On, okay, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. We are the ones that are approving the density. The director does not approve the density. We approve the density. That's what we're doing here is approving the density, which means he could have up to 105 units. Now, he does have the height restriction on there, which will make that a little bit more challenging. There are some things he, he's going to have to comply with all the laws, which he might not be able to get 105 units out of it. But we should be well aware that we are approving this rezone for a maximum of 105 units. That's what we're doing. Whether what the, Regardless of what size he builds those, if he can, he will. Right now, it looks like he might be doing 88, and that's fine, but he can do up to 105, and I think that's, that's all we're doing here. Does 105 units fit in this, you know, does this type of density work in this area, and are the conditions conducive to that? Are the conditions con conducive to making a good project, protecting public health and safety? And based on everything that we have here, I believe that is true. And you know, going over the plan and going over the plan, it does, it just, it's not going to do anything. It's, it's the density, and that's why there's an administrative function that goes through and handle the, handles those things. 
this isn't our job. Our job is to do what we have been doing, going over, and um, I do feel that this is actually being a bit nitpicky. And you can get upset about it, and it is, and I think people that are gonna do projects like this, we want people to come in with affordable projects and do projects like this, we should work with them, not nitpick them to death. And they will get more done. People see this and they don't wanna do it. We should work with it, do our job, density, rezoning, and work with the administration and every other department so they can do their job. And if there's a law that we don't like about that public health and safety part of it, that is an administrative function, we look at changing that law. That's what we do as lawmakers, not go through all of these things, which I, I believe is going completely outside of our scope. Um, so again, I, I'm comfortable with this project. Um, I think up to 105 uh, units is acceptable. Whether he can pull that off or not is, is gonna be up to him, and it's gonna be a challenge for Mr. Tai to get, be compliant with all of these things and have it pencil out and make it work. So um, I think we have the necessary things in here, provisions that, that totally protect this project and protect the public health and safety. And um, with that, I'll yield. It's very straightforward and simple. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Kern. Final comments, um, Ms. Willie, final comment. Okay, um, Director Kanuha, when you figure out maximum um, density, aren't you supposed to deduct the area for the roadways in the planning commission uh, rules isn't that the case no but it, it no. from a practical standpoint it ends up being deducted. but i think we don't you isn't there now a planning my understanding there is a rule a planning department rule that you exclude the roadway area this was when chris was went in determining maximum density the roadway areas are normally excluded as part of subdivision. You know, for these these kinds of projects, you know, it, it's just by practicality. I mean, he has to put in a road, so okay, he's I'm not going to be able to do the units. My understanding of the planning department rules is you exclude the common area in determining what the maximum density is. No, we take the gross and then whatever. We take the gross and then when it comes in for plan approval, um, um, there's percentage deductions for landscaping, setbacks, okay, things well, of that nature. I'm, I don't want to take up time on this. Um, I, My recollection in working with some development is that there is a rule on that. There either is or there isn't. If it is, I'm sure you'll go along with what it says so um and um i think just um i think mr ty have expressed my concern and you shared it that one way or another you should design the plan so that a, a fire trucks can turn around at some place and it looks like there's an obvious location to me to be able to do that and um, it would affect it potentially would affect density if that taking out one parking space or two parking spaces would be affected so i would ask that you please observe that in doing your plan and you said you would and i'm trusting that you will okay Okay, Mr. Onishi. Yeah, um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to make a comment that um, there is also another development that's possibly going to be doing affordable or workforce on the Hilo side. So there's another project that might be happening. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, just the same. Ms. Poindexter. Yeah, I just want to say thank you for, um, you know, considering building projects that are affordable. And I'll be following this through too also because we have a lot of families or um, people that want to move closer to the university, go to college or whatever, and need affordable units here in Hilo. So I commend you for that um, and I trust that you will follow through on that. So thank you for um, you know, coming to Hilo and doing this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Clark, roll call vote for this one, please. Ms. Eoff. Aye. Ms. Ford. Honolulu. Mr. Ligon. Aye. Mr. Kanuha. Aye. Mr. Kern. Aye. Mr. Onishi. Aye. Ms. Poindexter. Aye. Ms. Willie. Aye. Chair Shimoto. Aye. Uh, Ms. Ford. Aye. Chair Shimoto, have nine ayes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bill 214 as amended passes first reading. Uh, thank Chair. you. Okay. Is it possible to take a couple? Yes, so I see Mr. Fuki. Mr. Yeah. Fuki.